Glorious. Uh, we've just come inside to the new inn. Good morning, everybody. Morning. Lovely to see you. Uh, come on over, Lee. This is Lee, the landlord. Good to see you. Um, ahead of the election, the government keep telling us for businesses, inflation's come down. Is that how it feels running a business? Far from it. Far from it. I mean, energy, same as everybody else in hospitality, killing us. Price of potatoes, price of butter, our figures for utilities were £20,000 two years ago. This year we forecasted at £47,000. Wow. So it's a big difference, all off your bottom line. And your punters that come in, you've got 18 year olds, you've got 90 odd year olds. What are they saying ahead of this election? Within reason, everybody feels politically homeless. homeless. They don't know where to go. Right. Oh, unless you're staunch, which is fine, understandable. But everybody's so confused. I think people want to change, but what we're changing They're for, do we sure know? what that change looks like. That, Thank you. Um, come and meet Andy and Lisa, because they run a florist not far from here. Uh, morning to you. Right. Business is OK. Post-trading tariffs have settled down all right, but you worry that punters aren't spending on luxuries like flowers. Yeah, if, you've, if you're struggling month to month, week to week, and you've got things to pay for, flowers are a luxury, so... <laughs> You don't need to buy them, so what, why would you if you've got other things you have to pay for? The essentials. And, yeah. and Andy, you saw Brexit as an opportunity for UK businesses to thrive and provide the produce that Europe was. You're a bit gutted that's not happened. Yeah, because obviously we still order our flowers mainly from Holland. And uh, when you think about climate change and things like that, they're obviously coming all that way. And Brexit gave us an opportunity to maybe increase the amount of flowers that we grow in the UK, which enables us to obviously buy in the UK then. Um, keep that money in the UK economy. So, yeah, it's it's an opportunity missed, I think. It's not happened. And briefly, if someone was to come out in the next 48 hours and say we we're going to invest in local business, would that be enough to swing your vote? Because you're both open to persuasion at the moment. Yeah. No, um, the difficulty is it comes down to trust, what they tell you and if it's, if it's true. So we've had levelling up for how many years? And there's very little evidence of that up here in the north. And when that trust is gone, it's very difficult to bring it back, isn't it? And uh, that's something Angie's been telling me as well. She was brave enough to open up a glamping site over lockdown. Well done. And it survived, it but cost of living has gone up. For you, transport would be revolutionary for communities around here. Oh, completely. So we're up in the Upper Valley, so Hebden Bridge, Mytham, Royd, Todmorden. Beautiful places to visit, but we don't have an integrated transport plan. Um, we started talking to the council back in February about trying to come up with some plans like a park and ride, like um, buses, like hopper buses that can come up and down to those um, hilltop villages, which is where we are. At Daisy Bank Camp, if somebody wants to come by public transport, they have to walk for 20 minutes along a main road to get to us with their luggage. So it's just, it's just not possible. It can be off-putting, can't it, oh, Very quickly, um, levelling up was a big promise of the last government. OK, your face says it all. <laughs> Thank you very much, Angie. Um, I think what we've noticed, John and Sally, as we've been going on this tour around England over the past few weeks, is that engagement has gone up. When we started out, people were saying, I'm not interested, I don't want to talk about it. People do want to talk about the election now, but they haven't necessarily made their mind up. Although we have had one uh, contributor in here this morning. We asked Tabitha, yeah. where are you going to lend your vote? And she said, mind your own business. It's got nothing to do with you. Uh, a true Yorkshire straight talker, isn't she, little Tabitha here? <laughs> She's absolutely gorgeous, Nina. You thank made you. Your mind up, Tabitha. Tabitha. Thank you. Yes. She's not saying, is she? We should maybe get it together with uh, Larry the cat in Downing Street and they could, uh, <laughs> they could have a political debate, couldn't they? <laughs>